released in 1985, the Enterprise 64 was an innovative computer for its time, with its unique design, colourful keyboard, internal joystick and technical specification. Unfortunately, due to a series of technical delays, it was considered too late for the market and never received the acclaim many considered it should have. So, let's open it up, look inside, fix what we need to, and apply some modern magic to this Enterprise 64. Having removed 13 screws from this large footprint, the Enterprise 64 opens up in an unconventional fashion. First with the keyboard, the function cover display, a joystick, well, sponge, the rubber keyboard membrane, the expansion slot cover, and finally, the top housing to reveal the internal motherboard. Removing the delicate keyboard membrane, we can now view the internal motherboard. Upon closer inspection, we've identified our Zilog Z80A CPU, our Intelligent Software ROM, Dave, our custom 4-channel stereo sound chip, and Nick, our custom video chip hiding underneath that heatsink. And finally, our 64K in 8 1-bit 64K chips which is divided into four 16K paging spaces, which can be allocated to up to 256 16K segments. And each segment is allocated a status of either RAM, video or system, with five operational states. And we can see each active segment as part of the booting process. Reviewing the remainder of the motherboard, we can see some potentiometers, the ROM bay port, and the internal speaker. So let's remove the motherboard for a closer inspection. During the Enterprise's life cycle, it was known by a number of previous names, which include Samurai, Oscar, Elan, and Flan, which we can see on the board here. And this one is an issue four with the obligatory bodge wire. Having noticed an issue with the case, It is now time to reassemble the keyboard and the joystick. Given this computer is currently nearly 40 years old, I needed to find an alternative power supply. So having cut the barrel jack off and soldered it up, and purchased a 3D printed display SCART lead, it was now time to power up the Enterprise 64.
Um, it's a word processor. And that's because the Enterprise uses cartridge ROMs. In this case, Intelligent Software Basic. So, let's have a go at loading something from a cassette tape. Later in 1985, Enterprise Computers released the Enterprise 128. So, let's open this up and see what subtle differences we can identify between the 64 and the 128. Again, removing the keyboard rubber membrane and the joystick dampening sponge, it was now time to open up this 128 and have a look inside but there's a problem it won't open so checking underneath the label on the base of the 128 we can identify another screw so undoing that allows us to open the case upon opening it up everything looks exactly the same as the enterprise 64 with the exception of this prominent daughter board. So let's remove the keyboard membrane ribbons from the board and have a closer look. So detaching the internal speaker and moving it to one side allows us to bring out the entire board. But wait, what's that? It's sponge wrapped in metallic tape wedged in between the video modulator and the rear of the case. Reviewing the 128's motherboard, we have a date code of 1984, Enterprise computers, we have the standard Z80A CPU with the 1984 Intelligent Software ROM, our eight dynamic RAM chips, but this is where it differs with a daughter board containing eight one bit dynamic RAMs, which doubles the number of paging slots from four to eight. And reviewing the underside of the board, we can see this is an issue 6 with the same obligatory bodge wire. So whilst we have access, let's give all the edge connectors a good clean. 
having connected everything back up, we've got a keyboard problem. And it's this keyboard membrane ribbon. And if we look back at the 64, we can see these blue bits, which is an indication this is a replacement. So, let's remove this membrane, purchase a replacement, and install it on this Enterprise 128, connecting very carefully back onto the motherboard. Let's give the Enterprise 128 a final keyboard test. Placing the Enterprises side by side, this is a great opportunity to look at some of the physical differences between both units. So first off we've got the label which is 64 and a green joystick and the 128 with a 128 label and black joystick. The 128 has an extra screw underneath the serial label. The 64 has a green spacebar support whereas the 128 has a black one. Obviously the 128 has an additional 64k of RAM. The board issues are 4 and 6, which is expected. The project codes are FLAN and Enterprise, and again this is expected. And surprisingly inside the 128 there's a lack of interior paint. The internal speaker adhesive fastening is halved, and again on the 128 the video modulator silver sponge support. Having acquired this mystery cart, it was time to open it up to see if we could identify what it was. But unfortunately, short of a circuit board and a chip, there's nothing else there. So plugging it into the Enterprise, we can see this is a German intelligent software basic cartridge. Taking a photo of the UK IS Basic cartridge and using a suitable paint package, it was now time to create a new label and apply it to the cartridge. Having navigated to this Hungarian retro website, I ordered an Enterprise SD card adapter using this email. The board arrived promptly and using the additional information available I downloaded the 3D print file, printed it out, created an SD card label, ready for the SD card. Given the SD card image installation process is lengthy, I've included this as a separate video guide in the description. Having booted the Enterprise 128, we can see it's identified the SD card and partitions F through to O. So let's load up a demo or two to see what the Enterprise can do. Before we play some games, I need a substantial joystick, something like this. But the Enterprise has non-standard controller interfaces, so we need something like this.
For those that don't have an enterprise, an emulator is available. And again, due to the lengthy installation process, I've created a separate installation guide, and the link is in the description. So having configured the disk-based program loader, let's load one of my favourite games from back in the day, Attic Attack. And for those who want a more authentic experience, you can also load tap files. So let's configure yet another fantastic game from back in the day. Yes, it's Jetpack. As original enterprise games are really hard to find, now we have the sound output from the tap file. That gave me an idea. Having recorded the audio for numerous games, the Enterprise 64 and 128 cassette demos and shop demos, I uploaded them to a cloud file system so anybody can download from an internet connected device. And of course, the download link is in the description. And yet another retro classic, Turbo Esprit. And finally, the fantastic Nodes of Yesod. Nodes of Yesod from the Odin Computer Graphics Team.